Roy Jang. That's right. Tonight you get two hosts, and that means two times the fun. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. How about we each have half as much fun as usual, and then we combine it for just a normal amount of fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds easier. Let's do that. Uh, great. So let's get right into the headlines. Kick things off with some big sports news. Last night, the Boston Celtics won the NBA championship. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Now they have a record number of championships, 18, which is one more than the Lakers and somehow 25 more than the Clippers. <laughs> and now they're ready to celebrate with the city of Boston. But first, they're going somewhere fun. According to the Boston Globe, before the Celtics return to Boston, they will first spend a few days celebrating their win in Miami. They plan to return to Boston on Friday. <laughs> of course the Celtics are going to celebrate in Miami. I mean, you got to go to where the butts are. And Boston doesn't have any good butts. Even though they have a ton of assholes. I mean, how do people in Boston celebrate anything? Come on, let's party with clam chowder at Matt Wahlberg's house. Ron, Ronnie, you know what would be so funny is if you did that joke with a Boston accent. <laughs> <laughs> but let's move on to the election. We've been talking a lot about President Biden and Donald Trump, but the president isn't the only elected official who can ruin your life. There are hundreds of people all over the country who are coming for you. <laughs> So let's take a look at some of these promising young stars in a special edition of Indecision 2024, going down on the ballot. Let's kick things off in Minnesota, where Republicans have endorsed Royce White to run against Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar in November. And he's already turning the race into an episode of Jerry Springer. White has been mired in controversial revelations, including failure to pay child support, referring to women as mouthy and at one time identifying himself as an anti-Semite on social media. And then there are the questionable campaign expenditures in 2022 when he ran for Congress, including $1,200 at a Florida strip club. I'm not paying child support to mouthy women because I'm spending it at a strip club. I mean... <laughs> Talk about red flag bingo. Uh, he even calls himself an anti-Semite on social media. Although, to be fair to him, declaring you're an anti-Semite is how you have to log into Twitter now. That's the new, <laughs> that's the new capture. Uh, by the way, by the way, if, if you're wondering about the accusation that Roy spent campaign funds at a strip club, listen, he has a very clear explanation for this. It right. was recently revealed you spent campaign donations at a strip club. Is that true? That's not true. Okay. It was a reference to a campaign filing with yes. the FEC that was not done properly. Your claim is there were filings which said you spent campaign funds at a strip club, but they were incorrect no, the, the, filings. They, they, no, they didn't say that I spent the funds at a strip club. Or no, let's say it, they didn't say that I spent the funds on strippers. But it was spent at a strip club. Well, a strip club has, they sell food at the strip club, don't they? So, uh, I'm not sure this helps his case. Uh, Minnesota needs a senator who makes good decisions. So vote for me, the guy who goes to a strip club to eat shrimp. <laughs> And look, hey, I'm sorry for interrupting him, okay? I mean, I mean, you were busy explaining how you don't know anything about strip clubs? You've spent the money on food at a strip club. Is that more accurate? You seem to be very unfamiliar with strippers and strip clubs and drag strip shows, so I'll, I'll inform you, maybe Please. you aren't informed, that they do have food at strip clubs. So what you're saying is the money was no, wait, spent at you know a strip that, club. No way, did you know that, Did you know that? I know strip clubs have... Have you ever been to a strip club? One time. Did, did you like the food? No. You got to go to better strip clubs. Guys. Okay. Wow. Uh, this guy went really quick from not knowing anything about strip clubs to being a strip club expert, right? <laughs> I don't know about that place. But go to the second floor, ask for Clarice, okay? She'll take you to the champagne room, and behind that is the real VIP room, code 2664. Tell them you want the Royce White special. They'll know what you need. <laughs> understand why this guy is trying really hard not to violate campaign finance law, but also wants to be very clear that he knows his way around strip clubs. Right, which is fine. No judgment. Just say you used the wrong credit card. It wouldn't be the worst accidental insertion in a strip club. 
This guy's got way more problems than that. Look, I, and I don't want to sound mouthy, but... <laughs> enough is enough. Someone needs to call this guy out for his offensive wine hat, okay? <laughs> Unacceptable. That is for white women only. <laughs> My culture is not your costume, asshole. <laughs> race in Missouri, where a candidate for local office is getting the word out for the, the best way that young people know how, by shitposting. Valentina Gomez, a Missouri Republican running for Secretary of State, has triggered liberals with her campaign videos like this one. In America, you can be anything you want. Don't be weak and gay. Brittany Griner should be rotting in a Russian prison, not going to the Olympics. Caitlin Clark is the only reason why we even watched women's basketball. She deserves to go to the Olympics, unlike this unpatriotic lesbian. I love that she's super into women's basketball, but she's angry that there's a lesbian in the WNBA. Is someone gonna tell her? <laughs> she's not just planning to get gays out of women's sports, she's also deeply committed to getting them out of your library books. This is what I will do to the growing books when I become Secretary of State. Let's go. Welcome to the main event. These books come from Missouri Public Library. When I'm in office, they will burn. Jesus, a flamethrower? Take it easy. This is a book burning, not a gender reveal party. <laughs> and what's wrong with the match? Was she worried that if she got too close, the books would turn her gay? <laughs> And just to remind you, she's running for Missouri Secretary of State. Typically not a job where you choose who goes to the Olympics or set fire to anything. But uh, enough of these mean lord uh, human clickbait candidates, okay? Whatever happened to people with substantive, common sense legislative ideas? Like congressional candidate from Florida, James Judge. I'll put forth legislation on President Trump's first day in office to suspend the writ of habeas corpus. This will give President Trump the authority to arrest and imprison the treasonous officials and subversives. Wow, pretty casual call for the end of democracy there. I mean, you, <laughs> you can't demand a suspension of due process in the same tone of voice you used to announce that someone's Toyota has their lights on in the parking lot. <laughs> I mean, this honestly it kind of makes you appreciate Trump even more. Because uh, at least he's got some showmanship. I mean, he's out there shouting on a big stage. He's waving his hands around like an alpha chimpanzee. It gets you riled up. You know, this guy looked like he interrupted a wedding reception. <laughs> Someone's gonna come up after him like, okay, thanks for that, James. If we could keep the speeches about Brad and Mary, that would be great. For more on these down-ballot races and what they say about the state of American democracy, we go live to Josh Johnson. <laughs> their candidates in this election cycle. Oh, I'll tell you why. We made our democracy too democratic, all right? <laughs> Anyone thinks they can run for office just because the Constitution says so. Uh, uh, Josh, but the Constitution does say so. Come on. <laughs> the Founding Fathers said that, but they didn't mean it, you know? They were talking about guys named George or Tom, not everybody. <laughs> not like either of you. You know, and definitely not me. Ooh, they'd be mad. Wait, wait, Josh, so you, you think we should prevent people from running for office? Yeah, it sounds like you're saying that we need less democracy. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we should bring back all the old offices that America used to have for these people. Like Village Idiot. <laughs> if you fight a book with a flamethrower, you are qualified for that office. <laughs> Books are an idiot's natural enemy, and idiots love fire, all right? <laughs> There's plenty of old jobs, like lighthouse keeper or snake oil salesman or the guy who screams, hear ye, hear ye. Um, or the dude at a saloon who spits in a bucket and makes that patooey sound. Uh, Josh, I think that's only in Westerns. Yeah, th th there's no way that you can find an office for every one of these people. Watch me. Like, remember that strip club guy, Royce White? He could be the town adulteress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, the person who wears an A on their clothes so everybody knew they liked to f 
Royce White is super qualified. My man is clearly spending campaign funds at the strip club. He took the most boring money in the economy and used it for over the pants stuff. <laughs> Point is, we'll find jobs for the crazy people. Then the serious jobs can go to the serious politicians. And, and how are we defining who's crazy and who's serious? Oh, that's easy. The crazy politicians will be ranting about space lasers, and the serious politicians will be on the Epstein list. All right. <laughs>